Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're going to do a painting tutorial on Shadow Creations, upcoming new release, Iconic Scenes, Volume 2. As you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece capturing that moment in the lobby card where the mummy is reaching in to get the scroll to make his exit and the horrified look on the archaeologist as he's sitting behind the desk seeing approaching death and it's right before his eyes man could you imagine now this piece is sculpted by Jeff Yeager it is the second in the line of kits from Shadow Creations the first being Frankenstein and the monster at the windmill scene currently there is 10 left from that initial run of 75 the initial run for this one of 75 sold out in a day there's currently a list going for uh, the second run of 50 which are half gone those will ship probably I would say late August September on the second run and these should start shipping end of June, July for the first run. So I'll have the email for Shadow Creations in a little bit down the video. And we're just going to take a quick peek at this beautiful 1A scale kit by Jeff. As you can see, I'm just going to kind of turn it around and you can just see all the detail in this. All the pottery, the artifacts, the chair, the lamp that's on there, the book that's on there. Uh, chest it's just it's just all there it's just a beautiful kit beautiful beautiful well what I'm going to do now is uh, tell you a little bit about how I brought this kit to life are you ready sit down grab your pen and paper hit your pause button whatever you want to do if you get one of these beauties this is just the way that I painted it to bring it to life so are you ready you guys ready? Well, let's go. I base coated the base with automotive gray primer and using Delta cream coat black. And of course, I went over the uh, automotive gray primer with the black. And then I chose for the base coat color, Freak Flex Mossy Moore Brown. I then shaded the base using Garage US Transparent Raw Umber transparent rich brown and transparent dark brown and then of course I quieted it all down with transparent black and then it was just the process of going back and forth hitting the raised details with the lightest color building in your shadows uh, just back and forth until you get the look you desired and believe it or not the base was done on to the bookcase I base coated the bookcase using Freak Flex Wooden Stake Brown and shade it with Garage US Transparent Raw Umber and Transparent Dark Brown. I then uh, introduced another brown using Garage US Transparent Rich Brown and just uh, kind of just sprayed that over to give it a more deeper look if you will. And then of course I quieted it all down uh, using the Transparent Black. And just like the base, it's that process of going back with your browns, your uh, transparents, and getting the look that looks right to your eye. And believe it or not, the bookcase was done. Now, on to the many, many pieces of the artifacts. I primed all the jars and artifacts using black. And for the top shelf jars, I used the following colors. I used Freak Flex Arterial Blue. Garage US Deep Pearl Gold, Freak Flex Old Rack Rust, Transparent Raw Umber, and Transparent Burnt Sienna. So again, it was just finding your basic colors that you want for those uh, artifacts, uh, painting them, and then of course introducing your transparents <coughs> to tie it all together and add shadowing as needed. So once I was done with that, I placed them onto the bookcase. Then I brought out the transparent black and just once again quieted things down. On to the next shelf. I used the following colors for these artifacts. Garage US Pearl, Deep Gold, Red Oxide, Transparent Raw Umber, and Transparent Golden Yellow. And of course shaded them 
uh, using the transparent black. Now on to the next batch of jars and pots. I use the following colors on the three pieces. Freak Flex Hammer Horror Red, Freak Flex Rotten Tooth Tan, and of course shade it with transparent dark brown. And for the next pieces, I used Freestyle Mars Red, Freak Flex Road Rash Brown, and shaded using transparent golden yellow. And I placed all these onto the shelf. Now for yet the next batch of jars. I pulled out some graduous greenish gray and khaki and shaded using Comart transparent forest green and transparent burnt orange. Freak Flex Rotten Tooth Tan, and then of course shading with Graduate Transparent Raw Umber, and highlighting using Freak Flex Old Rec Rust, and I place them onto the shelf. At this point, I highlighted the bookcase using some Old Rec Rust. Now, time to finish off the bottom shelf. And at this point, I was relieved. Uh, the bookcase was filling and I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I base coated the pieces using Freak Flex Wooden Stake and Asphyxia Blue and some uh, Pearl deep, coal, deep Gold for the artifact and the insignia on the bottle was used with that Deep Gold and I shade it using Transparent Raw Sienna. Transparent Golden Yellow and Transparent Black. Now it is time to finish off the artifacts. I base coat it using Freak Flex Dead Guy Gray and shade it using Transparent Dark Brown, Transparent Golden Yellow, Transparent Raw Umber, and of course Transparent Black. And place those onto the shelf. And believe it or not, the bookcase and artifacts and jars were done. Woohoo! Time to lighten up or time to get serious. Onto the table. I base coat it with Freak Flex Body Bait Black and highlight it using Freak Flex Mummified Brown and shade it using Garage US Transparent Dark Brown and of course my Transparent Black. I use Freak Flex Hammer Horror Red for the book on the table and Age Gold for the pages. Freak Flex Dead Guy Gray was used for the broken pieces of the tablet on the table. At this point I added more shading using Transparent Rich Brown for the table transparent medium green for the broken pieces of tablet and of course quiet it all down with the transparent black and believe it or not the table was done boom onto the scroll the chest and the artifacts box i base coated the chest and box with delta cream coat black and rotten to tan was used on the scroll so now I had my basic colors. I had the chest done, the artifacts box done, the lid done, and, and also the scroll base coated. So I began with the chest and base coated that, uh, that chest with Graduous Tie in Brown and Freak Flex Rotten to Tan for the canvas and shade it using Graduous Transparent Brown and Transparent Raw Umber. So at this point I came in back to the canvas and I highlighted the canvas using Freak Flex Bleach Balm Tan and quieted it all down with the transparent black. Just kind of building up some shadows and dirtying it up a little. I used Bleach Balm Tan to highlight the scroll and of course I shaded the scroll using transparent dark brown. Just kind of wanted to give it a dirty look like it, you know, it's old, you know, because they found it. It's an old artifact. So for the artifacts chest, I base coated it with tie-in brown and Dead Guy's Gray for the lid, and Aged Gold for the etchings on the chest, and shade it all with Transparent Dark Brown, and of course, quining everything down with some Transparent Black. We're moving along. The lamp was base coated with Body Bay Black, and the shade with Yellow Tan from Garage US. I then sprayed the stand with Garage US Pearl Gold, and highlighted to shade with Bleach Bone Tan and Garage US Yellow Orch and of course shade it using Transparent Raw Umber and Transparent Rich Brown. I was trying to give it 
It looked like it had a dim light, but yet an old lamp, an old uh, shade on it, but yet some uh, royalty, I guess, of the gold on the base of the lamp. And gosh, believe it or not, guys, the lamp is done. On to the chair that Jeff said he would never sculpt again. He ordered his wife to shoot him if he did. I base coated the chair with body bait black and highlight it using tie-in brown. And brought for the shading on the chair, I brought out some transparent dark brown, rich brown, and then of course quieted everything down with transparent black. Again, that's a process. You go back with your browns, your your transparents, and uh, just get the chair nice and dirty looking and old looking. And the chair was done. On to the figures and on to Ralph Norton. I base coated with automotive gray and I base coated the flesh using Reaper tan skin. I At this point I highlighted uh, the raised areas of the face with their tanned highlight and of course then shade it using their tan shadow. It's really a nice little uh, three punch there with these uh, Reaper Masters paints. You have the uh, tan skin, you have the shadow, the tan shadow, and of course you have the highlighted tanned highlights so you can kind of build up all the colors within three easy steps. At this point I added more highlighting to the raised areas of the face and hands and I pulled out some Garage US Garage Kit Flash and just hit all the highlight areas and uh, shade it. Added some shading to the face with the uh, Garage US Transparent Mar Red, Mars Red. And at this point I also wanted the base coat, the hair, eyebrows, and the shirt with black. That way I could see how all my skin tones were working together. You may want to go back at that point and just uh, re-hit parts of the face and just uh, to get the balance right. I used Garage US Light Green for the shirt and Body Bake Black for the belt. Bleach Bone Tan, at this point I painted in for the eyes and added more shading to the face and hands using the transparent Mars Red. Uh, for the hair, I just pulled out some different browns and just kind of dry brushed and just quieted it down with transparent black and it's again that back and forth process. So at this point, uh, I pulled out some Garage US Light Green for the shirt, Body Bake Black for the belt, Bleach Bone Tan for the eyes, and more shading to the face and hands using the transparent Mars Red. For his fingernails, I decided to mix up some Garage US Tongue and some of the tan highlight from the Reaper. And that way it gave it a pinkish flesh look and I just simply painted that in. Now his pants was base coated with Garage US Khaki and Delta Cream Coat Black for his shoes. I shaded the pants using Transparent Rich Brown and highlighted the shoes using Freak Flex Mummified Brown. Uh, Road Rash Brown from the Freak Flex line was used for the belt. And then of course bringing out my uh, transparent black to just quiet all the madness down. On to finishing the eyes. Body Big Black was used for the eye. Freak Flex Asphyxia Blue was used for the eye color. And of course Body Big Black was used for the pupil. And believe it or not, Norton was done. Time to finish off this bad boy. On to the mummy. I base coated the figure with body bake black. That way I could get my deep, deep uh, shading in there. You know, just something to really build on because the rest of this is simply doing introducing dry brushing. So I brought dry brushed the face and hands with Freak Flex Dead Guy Gray and the body using Rotten Tooth Tan. I pulled out some uh, transparent raw umber to start shading in the bandages and the body. I just wanted something different for the mummy, kind of a grayish old, uh, you know, just a real old falling apart look gray for his head and hands. And so I decided to separate the two. Normally I would do something similar, but this time I just tried to, decided to go for the gusto. At this point I dry brush more highlights on the body using Rotten Tooth Tan, Bleach Bone Tan, and some old wreck rust for some reddish look just for some other age of the bandages and then of course I shade it with transparent dark brown. I came back in and added more highlights of the face uh, with the gray and 
added some shading to the face with transparent black. At this point I used aged gold for the ring band and a sixty of blue for the rubies on the rings. So of course after I did all that it was just believe it or not we just had to finish off the eyes. So I base coated the eye area using bleach bone tan and body bait black for the eye, asphyxia blue for the eye color, and the black for the pupil on the mummy. And believe it or not, the kit was done. A lot of steps in this one, and there's a lot you can do with it. Um, this is just the color scheme I chose to bring this kit to life. This one will be sitting proudly next to Iconic Scenes 1, and uh, and eventually I'll be putting Iconic Scenes Volume 3 next to it once that comes out the first part of next year. So that is the beautiful Iconic Scenes Volume 2 produced by Shadow Creations. If you're interested in getting in on the uh, final 25, you can send an email to shadowcreations at gmail.com. And that way you can get on the list and uh, let me know that you're interested in one. And then you'll have this one probably in your collection. So uh, Talking Models is trying to get to 500. I believe we're just over four. We're almost there. Help me fulfill a goal that I had placed, uh, not for any rewards or just to know that this channel is uh, means something to someone, that you're getting something out of these videos and you're supporting me as I uh, film these put these up and uh, talk models. That's what it's about. So thank you everyone that has subscribed. Thank you to the new people that may subscribe after this one. Welcome aboard. So that's it for today's episode. I hope that you all have a great day today, a great week. And uh, as always, may the Lord bless your day.